I told a joke on a Zoom meeting and no one laughed. It turns out I'm not remotely funny. Today, I'm going to recap a 2017 action thriller film called Security. The movie opens with Eddie Deacon, an ex-Marine captain seeking employment at an outsourcing firm. The woman who interviewed him concluded that there was no suitable position for him due to his fragile psychological state following his departure from the Marine Corps. Eddie, with a sad tone, informed the interviewer that he had been jobless for a year and desperately needed work to support his wife and daughter. He even expressed his willingness to take on any role, including working as a janitor. As Eddie was about to leave, the woman called him back and informed him of a potentially fitting job as a mall security guard, with low pay and long hours, and Eddie could start immediately. Without hesitation, Eddie accepted the position. Meanwhile, a U.S. Marshal convoy was seen escorting a young girl named Jamie, aged 11, who was set to testify in court the next day. She was the key witness in a trial against the notorious crime gang, Triple Six. En route, the marshals realized they were being followed, and soon after, their convoy was attacked by a group of heavily armed professional mercenaries. One of the U.S. marshals instructed Jamie to flee into the woods and find help. Although the marshals were all killed, Jamie managed to escape. The mercenaries noticed her absence and quickly cleaned up the scene to remove any evidence. The focus shifts back to Eddie, who appears to be haunted by his past as a soldier. He called his wife to inform her of his new job as a security guard and extended his greetings to his daughter, whom he hadn't seen in a long time. Eddie arrived at the mall and was welcomed by Vance, the head security guard. Vance introduced Eddie to the other three guards, Ruby, Mason, and Johnny, who were all friendly. The mall's security system had some issues which Vance believed was due to bad weather. He provided Eddie with a uniform and proceeded to give him a tour of the mall. Eddie questioned the need for five security guards when the mall was closed. Vance explained that there had been a deadly robbery and that the city was plagued by gang-related crime. Vance secretly harbored feelings for Ruby, a co-worker who enjoyed drinking. Eddie finally began his work, and as he patrolled, he noticed Jamie pounding on the mall doors, pleading to be let in. Eddie impulsively opened the door to let in a frantic Jamie, who soon fell unconscious. He laid her on a couch while Vance attempted to call the police, but strangely, they couldn't get a phone signal, and the landline was disconnected. Soon after, a man named Charlie arrived at the mall, claiming to be Jamie's father and searching for her. Unquestioningly, Vance instructed another security guard to bring Jamie downstairs. However, Eddie was suspicious of Charlie, as Jamie seemed terrified, possibly trying to escape a malevolent father. Eddie questioned Charlie about Jamie's characteristics. When Jamie was brought to meet Charlie, she screamed in horror and ran away. Seeing this, Eddie forbade Vance from letting Charlie in. Unknown to them, Charlie was not Jamie's father but the leader of the mercenaries who ambushed the U.S. Marshal convoy, intending to capture Jamie. He disguised himself as her father to get close to her. Charlie then offered Vance cash in exchange for Jamie, tempting Vance, but Eddie intervened by striking him. Unyielding, Charlie threatened Eddie before leaving to prepare an attack. He explained his plan to the mercenaries, surround the mall, establish a perimeter, and disable the guard's car. Meanwhile, Eddie tried to contact Jamie, who was hiding in the mall. She eventually emerged and asked Eddie to promise to protect her, which he agreed to. Once everyone was gathered, Mason informed Eddie and the other guards about Jamie's father, a former cartel money man who betrayed the criminals by exposing their crimes to the police, leading to his murder. Jamie had secretly witnessed the killing and was in witness protection to testify against the cartel. Eddie then hid Jamie in a storage room for safety, maintaining radio contact and instructing her not to open the door for anyone until safe. Vance and the other guards were frightened, knowing that Charlie's gang had killed highly trained government agents and could easily overpower the security guards. However, Eddie, an ex-Marine, remained unafraid, devising a strategy and calming the others. Eddie and the guards created homemade bombs and traps to defend them all and protect Jamie. Charlie initiated his attack, sending a sniper in through the roof, while others attempted entry through the back door. With Vance and the others' assistance, Eddie managed to eliminate several mercenaries. 
However, the sniper successfully entered the mall and targeted Vance. Fortunately, Ruby appeared just in time to rescue Vance. Charlie then pulled back his forces, instructing them to clean up the crime scene before launching their next assault. Eddie and the security guards formulated a defensive strategy, positioning Vance, Ruby, and Mason at each entrance and exit of the mall, while Johnny was tasked with signaling any passing police patrols with a flashlight. Shortly after, Jamie emerged from hiding, offering her help. Meanwhile, Charlie and his team managed to infiltrate the mall with the assistance of their skilled hacker. Jamie sent an RC car to Charlie, attempting to distract him and his gang by revealing a location Eddie had prepared for an ambush. Charlie directed his men to the site, promising them money if they succeeded in killing Jamie and threatening their families if they failed. Upon arrival, one of the soldiers fell victim to one of Eddie's traps. Ruby fought back, shooting arrows and hitting one of the mercenaries. However, the trained combatants counterattacked, severely wounding Ruby. Mason managed to kill two of the attackers using Eddie's traps and homemade weapons and then collected their rifles. Through the walkie-talkie, Eddie checked on his colleagues and was relieved they had all survived. He instructed Mason to stay put while he retrieved the rifle. However, the mercenaries discovered Eddie's location and attacked him, forcing him to flee. A police patrol car approached the mall and stopped at the entrance. Johnny tried to signal the police, but his flashlight failed, prompting him to leave his hiding place to alert the officers. A sniper on the roof spotted Johnny and shot him dead before he could reach the patrol car. Eddie asked his co-workers to regroup at the toy store. He managed to take down a mercenary, took his weapon, and eliminated the other guards in the area, all under the watchful eye of Charlie through a CCTV camera. Vance and Ruby emerged from hiding, but were immediately attacked. Ruby pushed Vance to escape while he attempted to save her. Simultaneously, the mercenaries located Mason and tried to kill him, but Eddie arrived just in time to eliminate them. Eddie and the others reached the toy store and hid there. Charlie, enraged by the events he had witnessed, decided to take matters into his own hands and eliminate them all. Ruby succumbed to her severe injuries, leaving Vance heartbroken over the loss of the woman he loved and who had saved his life. Eddie instructed Jamie to hide and gave her a doll containing a concealed weapon. Jamie shared her harrowing story about her life since her father's death and being pursued by Triple Six. Eddie expressed his sympathy and apologized to Jamie for not understanding the situation earlier. Eddie remains determined to keep his promise to protect Jamie and once again rejects Charlie's proposition to hand her over. Meanwhile, Mason notices a U.S. Marshal's car arriving in front of the mall. Simultaneously, Eddie spots a suspicious van, which turns out to be Charlie's radio van, housing the expert hacker responsible for coordinating the mercenaries' attacks. Eddie suspects the hacker has blocked their phone signal. He decides to exit through the back door to meet the U.S. Marshals, asking Vance to guard the toy store entrance. After Eddie departs, the mercenaries break into the toy store, and Vance engages in a fierce gunfight with them. On the other hand, the U.S. Marshals order Eddie to kneel and point their guns at him. Eddie clarifies that he is not Jamie's kidnapper, but a security guard. He signals Mason to bring Jamie to the U.S. Marshals. However, Eddie notices triple six tattoos on their necks, realizing they are part of the criminal gang posing as federal agents. Mason, who had emerged from hiding with Jamie, confronts the attacking mercenaries and is fatally shot. Nevertheless, Jamie manages to escape. Vance eliminates the remaining mercenaries to facilitate Jamie's escape, but is severely wounded and left helpless. After taking down the criminals disguised as federal agents, Eddie instructs Jamie to fetch a radio to call for help. Unbeknownst to them, Charlie is also listening in on their conversation through the walkie-talkie. Charlie orders his remaining men to kill Eddie while he pursues Jamie. Eddie hurries to destroy the radio van to restore their phone signal, defeating the mercenaries before being attacked by Charlie's second-in-command, a formidable fighter known as Dead Eyes. The two engage in an intense battle, but Eddie eventually subdues him after a lengthy fight. Eddie escapes on a motorized trike in the mall, using it to ram into the radio van. Dead Eyes attempts another attack, 
but Eddie manages to kill him using a gun from Vance's car, which Vance had informed him about earlier. Eddie also shoots and kills the sniper on guard, although he sustains multiple gunshot wounds. Meanwhile, Charlie stalks Jamie in the mall, sharing his story of being abandoned by his father, and offers to care for Jamie in exchange for her silence. Jamie manages to escape, but Charlie eventually finds her hiding place and captures her. As Charlie prepares to kill Jamie, an injured and staggering Eddie appears. Charlie suggests that Eddie should accept the money and leave so that his colleagues' deaths are not in vain. However, Eddie remains steadfast in his decision and commitment to his promise. Jamie catches Charlie off guard by using a taser concealed inside the doll Eddie had given her earlier, allowing Eddie to shoot Charlie in the head with Vance's gun and kill him. Following this, Jamie hurriedly contacts the police, who soon arrive and prepare to escort her to safety. Grateful, Jamie embraces Eddie tightly before departing with the officers. Eddie watches as Vance is carried to an ambulance, having survived his injuries. A few days post-incident, Jamie visits Eddie in the hospital, expressing that his daughter is fortunate to have a father like him. Her uncle then arrives to take her home. The film concludes with Eddie recovering and reuniting with his wife and daughter. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.